All right, guys, it's time to talk about RNG. It's the boogeyman of the space arena community that's usually the base for many, many rants. But we here at the Average Scent Enjoyer YouTube channel aren't afraid to jump headfirst into this sticky pot of foul play. Now, assuming you all have a fourth grade education, I'm not gonna waste time on explaining what RNG is. Let's start off with the single worst implementation of RNG in the entire game. You know it. You hate it more than finding a TFF member in your matchmaker. It's the limit breaking system. Honestly, this system is just a slap in the face to whoever falls for it. The predatory pricing of these things aims to trick unknowing players to dump tons of resources, obviously Celestium, into a potentially useless item. Okay, so I'm here in game, I'm going to risk a lot of resources just to prove a point. So I'm gonna go here, wow, I got 12 normal limit breakers, look at that, 15% chance, 1 million credits. Let's see here. Wow, it failed. Wow, it failed. Wow, that was an entire days of grinding gone. Yeah, it's a completely screwed up system. Now I'm down 2 million credits, 2 limit breakers. Look at this, yeah. I'll go spend 50, $50. Now this is a powerful limit breaker. Like, these are only used on a few things. Like, you're not going to use this unless you're, like, really, really high up. So, 50 bucks. Would you do what I just did? Would you spend 50 bucks for a 15% chance in a million credits? Even if you manage to successfully limit break the parameter, you still have to dump tons of resources into actually upgrading the thing that you just unlocked. But that isn't a problem for the top players, as they can throw around hundreds of millions of credits for fun. It makes strong players stronger while leaving casuals in the dust. Now, the runner up for bad RNG implementations in the game is the Galaxy Coordinate System. Now, these galaxies can easily be earned through clan wars and just generally playing the game, but they have been sold for real money in the past. They're essentially loot boxes, so that automatically makes them one of the worst forms of RNG. Another messed up form of RNG in this game is ship upgrades. You have no way to increase your odds, so you end up throwing away hundreds, if not thousands of blueprints and credits, just trying to get a couple of successful upgrades. The odds get so low it makes you question, did I really just spend all this time to get all these blueprints, all these credits, just to throw them all away at a small percent chance to upgrade this little tiny bonus just one time? Now, things do get somewhat better with module upgrades. At least with these, you have a way to increase your odds of actually getting what you paid for. The only downside to this is the sheer amount of resources you need for the upgrade to affect what you're doing at all. A perfect example of this is the Doomsday Laser. This thing needs to be limit broken and have millions and millions of credits, chips, and other resources dumped into it for the upgrades to actually matter. But I'm getting a little off topic. Let's move on to the next RNG based system, the Fleet Arena. It's an RNG based system, though I'm not exactly sure how the RNG works in it, but it's all around just terrible. You spend a lot of credits for ships that can be easily killed. Even a galactic carrier can be taken down by a group of corvettes. It's a completely worth worthless RNG system that isn't useful up until extremely high levels, where most of your opponents you face are bots. So these are the main RNG factors in Space Arena. Of course there are other smaller factors like where your ship warps and if the devs actually follow through on event release dates. Guys, they meant October of 2023, not this year. Anyways, that's about it. I'll see you guys in the arena. Later.